Hi guys, Dick Boucher, Sandy Hill Locomotive Works. Welcome to my channel, welcome to my shop. Uh, the channel is going to be pretty much involved in model building, uh, model steam engines, model gas engines. Um, I'm a kind of guy that has a lot of projects going at any one given time when I get uh, exasperated with something on one engine. I stop and I, I work on something else. So uh, let's get going here. Tonight I basically want to show you a fixture that we made up. But by the way, I'm past president of the New England Model Engineering Society. And this fixture was, uh, was something that Roly Goucher from the, uh, the group showed us how to make. It's for locating things on a faceplate in a horizontal plane. Uh, what I'm going to show you locating is it wouldn't be much of a problem to do it in the lathe, but if it's something heavy and it's something that's not totally in balance, this unit is indispensable. So uh, before I get to that, I got to show you some stuff that I made when I was an apprentice. Now let's see, uh, the, the diploma says I graduated in 1966. So it's probably some 53 and a half years ago I made this stuff. Um, these are little tie-down straps. And they operate with 1032 screws and we made it. We drew out of the stock room a good supply of screws. And also when we were apprentices they gave us cast iron blocks. And we made angle plates. And cubes and we drilled and tapped them 1032 all over the place um, this worked good for years but over the years I've managed to acquire uh, a few more fellows that uh, quit the trade and went to work as engineers were selling their stuff so I have found it more convenient to keep them now in a plastic box and in the plastic box I keep the screws, I keep an Allen wrench for the screws, and I've got a 1032 tap in there for tapping the different things that I use to, uh, to hold things together. I use brass flathead screws to, uh, to hold a strap against the surface on my angle blocks and cube just to keep from miring up this surface. If I can find some, if I can figure out how to get them into the video, I'll, I'll put some still photos of the, uh, the straps in use. But basically back to, the, to this fixture, um, I have no idea where I got this. It's, it was something I must have found it in a junkyard and say, wow, that's kind of cute. Roly Goucher, when he, uh, when he made his, he, used, uh, he, he was running a garage and he specialized in Volvos. And it seems the water pump in the Volvo, the seal gave out long before the bearings did. So he used the bearings out of a Volvo water pump to make his fixture. So from here on up, I gotta make sure this is coming in. Yeah, I made this. This is the the spindle thread of my lathe, so that I can mount my faceplate on here. What I'm working on now is the wheels to the Coles fire engine. There's quite a bit of turning that I do. Um, let's see. There we go. The rivets were cast in 
and they're kind of big and clunky and already on this wheel and well this wheels I've finished the machining there's a 5 8 40 thread there for the hub cap and there's a space for the thrust washer but I've taken all the rivets out of it and later on I'll show you the fixture I made I'm going to put escutcheon pins nice little brass heads in there it's going to look a lot better than this so we got to start this this project and I've done some turning on it already so I'm going to show you how I mount it on my faceplate here got my little straps and the face plate the face plate when I got it already had these 1032 holes in it now I got it from the widow of a fellow that I had gone through the apprenticeship school with and I can't help but wonder if maybe he had uh, he had put the 1032 screws in himself or if it just came that way it's for a 10 inch south bend lay the heavy 10 this is the part you'd actually do if the lay the face plate were mounted in your lathe And I just, just kind of eyeball lined it up here. I kind of like securing things. Now one more strap here. Right up in here. there we go now let me bring the camera in a little closer here now this is the cool part of this fixture you can see my indicator on there on a flexible gooseneck so now while the part is, and this, this borehole right here is, uh, is what I've got to machine the wheel around. So I can bring this gooseneck in, get it close, rotate things around here a bit, find my thunker. I had my thunker. Now, we'll use a different thunker. Now I can tap the wheel in close here. Now I can actually put some pressure on the indicator.
that's better tighten all the joints helps a lot now we'll swing it around 180 This indicator is calibrated half thousands. So allowing for some roughness in that hole, because I put that in there years ago, it's running within a thousandth right now. I don't know if you can see the dial or not. So we'll go and we'll finish tightening these screws down. We'll rotate around. I'm actually sweeping less than half a thousandth on this setup, which, for considering that this uh, coal steam fire pumper just sits on these wheels, it doesn't tear down the highway at any particular speed. It's just uh, they're there. So now I have all my clamps tightened and I take the face plate off the fixture. Now, before I go any further, uh, one of the features of this fixture is, as Roley taught it to us at the New England Model Engineering Society meeting, if you had a heavy piece on here that was out of balance, you could hold the fixture this way and add balance weights as you were working. I just realized I lost the camera here. If this, if this were a heavy piece that were out of balance, you could put the balance weights and get it pretty close to balance here before you put it on the lathe. So uh, thanks, Roly, for the lesson on that. Now all I got to do is get this back off here. Mm. Hang tight. I'll reset the camera and I'll take you over to the lathe. Okay, I've got it mounted in the lathe. I've got an indicator on it. And it's running within four thousandths. Which for what the purpose this is, is going to be plenty good enough. Uh, it's well within a plus or minus five tolerance. So from here on in, it's just basic turning. The one thing I may bring you back in is when I put the 5 8 40 thread on that, that end here just uh, to show you how I do these close-in shoulder threads. But other than that, it 
Dick Boucher, Sandy Hill Locomotive Works. Uh, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I may not become the most prolific YouTube creator out here, but I do have some things to show you. So uh, I look forward to uh, any comments below, just like any other creator. And thanks for watching, and so long.